The way we build houses today is very different from when I spent the summers working as a carpenter in my family's construction business. Ram on. Back then, people didn't ask whether a house was environmentally friendly or worry about how well it was insulated or even how much it cost to heat it. Today, traditional construction methods are being reinvented and new technologies explored. A friend of mine, who also happens to be a rock and roll star, actually built his home out of dirt. The technology is already here to tap into free energy from the wind and the sun. It's quite possible to live smaller without sacrificing beauty or design. And there's no reason that nature can't be part of a high-rise apartment tower. In the industry, it's known as building green. This is Salt Spring Island, one of the Gulf Islands off the west coast of Canada. These islands are one of my favorite places in the world. And this spectacular natural environment is the inspiration for an innovative builder who uses the most natural of building materials, the earth itself. What if we built our houses out of what's beneath our feet? Rammed earth is a traditional building technique still used today. Its name says it all. The main ingredient is simply highly compressed dirt. The material allows for the creation of buildings with an organic look and feel. One of the most stunning rammed earth houses is home to rock icon Randy Bachman of the Guess Who and of Bachman Turner Overdrive. Making their home as green as its surroundings was a labor of love for Randy and his wife, Denise. Hey! How are you? Glad to see you. Glad to see you, Randy. So this is actually rammed earth. This is it? Compressed rammed wow. earth. That looks just like solid, solid. concrete. Yeah, very solid. And colorful. And color, <laughs> not as but you had to add that though. Yes, <laughs> Denise added. She had a color palette and would right. choose the colors and throw in seashells and different oxides, which turn colors. Randy and Denise took advantage of the layering process of the wet earth to implant shells and other treasures along with the different colors. It all creates the feeling of a natural geological formation eroded by time. Even ancient fossilized creatures have been recreated by an artist and sculpted right into the walls. Inside, a pond keeps the humidity levels comfortable. And outside, a plant-covered roof keeps the house well insulated and intrigues the local wildlife. I can imagine well, birds. Well, we well, we, we walk out here and see deer right so there in the feeding. Sometimes they can this very confused looking deer comes and looks in the window while I'm on the computer and I'm like, go. <laughs> the Bachman's house was constructed by builder and designer Mirror Krayanoff. Mirror's rammed earth houses are famous throughout Salt Spring Island. Rammed earth is an ancient technology that has recently undergone a revival and has become very popular and accessible in a lot of uh, regions where it wasn't available before. Some things haven't changed. Soil that has been compacted still forms the basis for making rammed earth walls. Okay, we're standing in the formwork and we're gonna put some foam in. And that's the insulation, really. That's exactly right, yeah. Okay. So Mirror Krayanoff has adapted the process okay. by insulating and strengthening the walls. 
and then we take some steel. I was excited about doing rammed earth, but it needs to be insulated. So we thought insulation, let's hide it in the middle because the beauty of the rammed earth on both sides is, uh, you know, a good attribute. Muir has coined the term sire wall to describe his modernized version of building with earth. Sire wall stands for stabilized, insulated, rammed earth. We use a little bit of cement, five to 10% cement, and we use some steel reinforcing uh, to make it strong against earthquakes. We put the soil in on either side of the foam and compact it. You're just guiding it, okay? It's, you don't have to press down or anything, just guiding it. The rammed earth walls are tested for strength, and the results indicate that they will be standing for a long time. We take a diamond drill and drill out a cylinder like this, which goes to the geotechnical lab and then gets crushed. And that's how they determine the strength of our walls. And normally, our, the results are twice what the engineer expects. So our walls are extremely strong. How do we know it just won't wash away with a lot of erosion? Well, let me show you. Water doesn't penetrate rammed earth, so the walls remain free of mold. The result is healthier indoor air quality. Looks pretty good. Another advantage of walls made of rammed earth is that they don't contain the noxious chemicals present in many modern building materials. It was these kinds of health concerns that convinced the Bachmans to choose this method of construction. Growing up, I had asthma, I had allergies, and it was, you know, all, pretty much all the time. And in this house, it's gone. And we notice when we're away traveling, we come in here and we go, doesn't this smell great? It's just a natural smell that you haven't smelled for a long time. And to have the house partially into the earth, into the ground, to have the walls being that thick, there's no real outside noises or vibrations that you get so acoustically. It's, it's just great for recording, for sound. Those big timbers up Recycled there timbers right. that used to be part of an old logging bridge have been installed to provide additional structural support to the house. And they make a good place to hang a hammock. The thick rammed earth walls definitely make for a great sound, but their mass also helps to keep the house at a comfortable temperature year round. A material that has a lot of mass will store heat and then release it later. Like a hot water bottle that warms up a cold bed, these walls absorb heat from the sun and will keep the house warm for days even with the heating system turned off. You know, we may not always have, uh, you know, cheap oil or cheap electricity. So to have housing that doesn't require heating is a, a great gift to our descendants. Why shouldn't we build with nature's leftovers? Green buildings are healthy buildings, and natural materials that have been used for centuries are gaining new respect. Architect Martin Liefheber designs top-of-the-line sustainable homes. One of his favorite building materials is straw. Straw is a waste product from farms. It's used for bedding for horses and for cows, but Essentially, it's something that's not much done with, and uh, so why not build a house out of it? And many have been built. This is one of those things where a cellulose or a wood product is essentially waste. Nothing is done with it. It can be used to build with, and it's labor intensive. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a very simple process, so it's, it's really perfect for um, people who want to just make their own houses. Builder Colin Richards made the decision to specialize in green building 
and ever since, he's been a mentor to young workers interested in learning the techniques of straw bale construction. Well, the bales arrive and uh, they need to be a year old, so it's nice and dry and it smells very nice. It smells like a barn initially when it uh, arrives. It gets stacked up, um, much like you lay up bricks, and it's just really, really pleasant to work with, and the bales are easy to lift. Okay, I'll push from this side. You want to put a little way? Yeah, I'll jam it. And then a little later on, uh, you put wire mesh. Okay, pull it. Yeah. All right, coming at you, right? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Get it. Okay, got it. Yeah. And you kind of sew it together, much like you're making a piece of clothing. Uh, okay, yeah, there it is. coming back. The most interesting thing about straw bale is, is that there's, yep. it's so high insulating. Okay, no. And then as the last thing uh, we do is uh, uh, one or two coats of um, cement plaster. And it makes a very, very stiff wall. There's always fresh air in the house because it's breathing. Mm -hmm. Air quality is a top priority in green construction. And because these straw bale walls naturally let stale air out and clean air in, they were the first choice of a homeowner with severe chemical sensitivities when she chose Martin Leafhaber to design a cooperative residence in Clarkson, Ontario. The only hint of what the walls are made of is revealed in an opening left to show the origins of the building material. People call it the truth window. How can we get heat and light for free? This lakeside retreat is Martin Leafheber's latest design for a straw bale home. It takes green living to the next level. So, you know, just looking at the house for the first time, it looks fairly ordinary, but what are the features that would distinguish this from other houses? It's off the grid. So ah, it, there's no, no wires. There's no wires at all, and that's it. So this is what, what it takes to be off the grid. We have solar electric. Those are the panels on, right. on the, on the now left. There are two kinds of panels there. A solar hot water makes all the hot water for the house. Even yes. in the winter? Even in the winter, yes. It, it, it really reactive to just plain light. It doesn't uh -huh. necessarily have to be sunlight. And on the very top, we have the, uh, with the wind turbine. Well, it's a bit of a climb, but uh, you have to so take this a look. is a roof, but a roof with a difference. Of course, this one is a kind of a character here that's very vital in the energy role, which yeah. is the turbine, and it's very gusty and everything that produces a phenomenal amount of power. All this free energy is harnessed by gadgets inside the house that are compact enough to fit right into the bedroom closet. So this is all the equipment we need to take all the power that's being produced by the solar panels and the turbine, it comes here as, uh, as, as direct current. It's being uh, stored into batteries, which are 12 batteries that are each 2 volts, so it's 24 volts. And that runs everything, refrigerators, it, uh, it, television? Well, not as the low voltage. What happens is that we also have an inverter, and it changes the, the, the direct current to alternating current which is what you need for regular running all the household appliances. This home is meeting its energy needs all on its own. For Martin Leafhaber, that's a revolutionary concept. One of the things, when you see the solar panels here, and it's not a big system, which supplies all the, the, the electricity for this house. And if every house were to do that, if every building would do that, then essentially we can see that the housing stock, the building stock, is actually the power generator. Then it actually means that the city is becoming the generator of energy rather than the consumer of energy. But it would be a most remarkable thing that we can actually think that neighborhoods actually take the place of a nuclear power plant. What's the easiest way to go green? A sustainable home works with nature rather than against it. The first priority for building green is to position a house so that it can use its natural surroundings to the greatest advantage. 
on Lake Ontario's Bay of Quinte, that means opening the structure to sunlight from the south. 